Hey YouTube, I'm Kagome and I wanted to talk to you guys about something very important today. Important to me at least. Uh, before I get started, I wanted to just say I'm not a healthcare professional, so if you have any concerns about your health or things that you should or should not do, you should always go talk to your doctor. This is just my advice on uh, past experiences, things that I've learned and come to um, use now. So. Let me get started. So uh, what we are talking about today is hair regrowth, removal, and skin care after cancer, chemotherapy, and radiation. Okay, so I know a lot of you guys have questions about this. First, I'll talk about the hair on, on your head, which is probably the most important thing to a lot of people. Regrowing hair after chemotherapy and radiation can be very hard. I won't. I, I wear wigs myself. This is a wig, and I wear them all the time outside of the house. It's been a few years for me, but my I have hair. I do have hair. I have quite long hair, but I also have bald spots. Uh, before I had chemotherapy, I had really thick hair, like tons of hair. It would take me hours. To get through it and comb it when it was natural but anyways I don't have that anymore my hair has changed dramatically when it grew back it was very soft like baby hair and it's very thin now so uh, I have spot I have a spot here I have a spot here and when it first starts to grow back it's gonna feel like it's taking forever I'll tell you this the hair on the parts of your body that you don't want to grow back those are the parts that, that are going to grow back the fastest. Your legs, your nether regions, your underarms, all that, even facial hair. If you didn't have a problem with facial hair before, you might now, which I do. I did not before. I never had a problem with facial hair, but now I do. And I talked to the doctor about it, and there's not really much difference. they was going to tell you, so it's kind of like, kind of on your own. They'll just say use some cream or something like that, but we're going to talk about that too. But anyways, when I first started growing hair back on my head, um, it was summertime, and uh, I didn't want to use anything harsh on my head. So I actually went to the store, and I found a petroleum jelly cream. So it's not the actual greasy cream. It's, it's more like a lotion. So I rub that on my head every day, but still cover your head up, even if you start to grow hair when you're outside. Cover your head with a hat or a scarf because you can get sunburned. But that won't make your head all shiny and stuff like Vaseline would. Vaseline would, but you do need to have some type of moisturizer on your scalp. Because if it is your scalp, even if you don't have hair, your scalp will still get dry. So you need to take care of it. Be very careful. You have to, after chemo, you have to treat your skin like you would treat a baby's skin. It is very, very sensitive. So you have to treat it that way. Don't be harsh on your skin. When I, when my hair started growing back, I actually used a baby brush to brush my hair because it would, like, you know, flare up in different places and it wouldn't look really nice even though I wasn't going to wear it out anywhere unless I was just going to the doctor or something. Uh, besides that, I would wash my hair in baby shampoo when I first started going it back I washed it in baby shampoo and it was enough I didn't have much up there so and it would just be silky and shiny and then when the shampoo would run down on my skin it wouldn't irritate my skin either so that um I did start using because I wanted my my hair to grow in I wanted to be able to wear my regular hair my real hair so I started using a hair regrowth treatment and I know you guys have heard of Rogaine and I'll tell you Rogaine is very 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 expensive and it's not a permanent solution what I'm using is not a permanent solution either but I did use this and I just want to tell you guys about it is I got it from Walmart and it's Equate hair regrowth for women I, I believe they have it for men too but I got this one it was half the price not even half the price of Rogaine, you get three bottles of this stuff, and you put it on in the morning and at night, which I forget to do. So it's probably it, it did it did work. My hair was growing in those spots, but as soon as I stopped using it, the hair you know it left again. 
So it's not permanent, but it can help. I think I'm going to start doing it again because it helps. If I can remember to do it, I'm going to put it like I'm going to put a bottle beside my bed at night. So when I do my nightly routine, I can start doing it. Okay, as far as hair on the other parts of your of your body, like your legs down below, your arms, your face, you're still gonna be wanna be careful. If you're just finishing up your chemo or if it's been like a few months or something, you're not gonna want to use a razor blade on your uh, skin because if you cut yourself, you can get an infection and you don't want that. And the doctor will tell you if you ask them not to use a razor blade for a very long time. So you're not going to want to do that. And your skin is really sensitive, so you're not going to want to use hair removal creams right away. Even if the doctor says it's okay, I would not recommend it because um, your skin is just, it's just too sensitive and it burns. And I learned from experience, just don't do it. I had, I've had blisters and stuff from hair removal creams. I use them now, not real, not often, but I do use them. But in the beginning, I no, don't don't use them right away. Just take your time with anything. You have to ease in kind of slowly and do it. So, what I I will recommend I will rec recommend everybody doing is getting a set of trimmers. Don't go getting those little skinny trimmers with the light on the end going to help you contour and blah, 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 get you a heavy duty set of trimmers with a rechargeable battery that's going to last you forever. So I've had these for a very long time and I can just sit it on the base and I have to worry about getting batteries or if I look in the mirror and say, oh gosh, I got hair and then my batteries are dead. You don't have to worry about that. So that's what you need to do. And you need to use trimmers. Um, on your legs, you need to use them everywhere that you want to remove hair. You just need to use trimmers. And I'll tell you, um, I was kind of scared about using these on my face because I was afraid I was going to get like a five o'clock shadow or something. But what I do is I spot treat. I don't just don't just take these. If you're a woman, don't just take nye, 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 and like just shave your whole face. Just find the spots. Like if you just have little spots, like if you have one here or here or like it's just your lip just do those areas don't do everything and then I know um, my hairline started coming down I was getting sideburns I'd use it there but don't use a razor right away you can get back to using the razor but don't do that right away it will irritate your skin you can cut yourself and get infections all kind of bad things that you don't want you can use a razor, I mean trimmers. You can use trimmers anywhere on your body. Just be careful. You can still nick yourself with trimmers, but it's a lot harder. These are a lot safer. I'll talk to you um, about creams too. I do have creams now. The first cream I started using on my face was a, this is an old box, Sally Hansen uh, Facial Hair Remover Cream. This was the most gentle thing that I found. For my face, and I got it from CVS from the drugstore. It was like eight dollars or something, and it has a vitamin E cream with it that you use right after. You may not want to use it for the time that it allows. You may want to go a shorter time in the beginning because you can get blisters if you leave it on too long. Your skin is different now; it's not the same. It's never going to be the way it was before. So you just have to really be careful of what you do. So, um, and like I said, don't rub this all over your face either. Just put it in spots that you need that you need it. And if your hair is tougher, when, when my hair first started growing in, it was a lot thinner than it is now. But if your hair is tougher, this is probably not going to work. This does not work for me anymore. But if you have um, thinner hair, this will be really good. It'll take the hair off in like seconds. So, when I do try to use it, I'll tell you, do not use Nair. If you want to have a chemical burn that you have to baby for weeks, use Nair. Okay? Nair is not good for anything. It's not good for your face. It's not good for your legs. It's not it's just not good. It's just bad all around. Don't use it. 
but I did find this beat beat fast acting gel cream this is not meant for your face but I find if I just spot treat it works fine just don't leave it on for the amount that you would leave it on for your legs just leave it on just a little bit I think they have it for your face but I couldn't find it in the store so I just use this it has it says legs and body sensitive formula and it has aloe vera in it so that's why I picked this this is a little more expensive I can't remember how much it was but it's a really big bottle it has a pump and it, it has lasted me like forever forever and ever and ever but um you can use this and whenever you use creams this does not come with a cooler gel or vitamin E thing so I would suggest after you use your cream after you shave or with your trimmers any of that I would suggest you rub on some aloe vera gel this is like three dollars so get you some aloe vera gel from like the dollar store 100% pure aloe seeds and cools so get you some of this and get you a bottle of vitamin E oil and if you put this in your hand and then get a little bit of the vitamin E oil it does not have to be the expensive kind they have two dollar bottles and family dollars so you can get that and then you rub it on the spots even on your face so like if you do your face at night you can just rub this stuff on your face at night with the oil it'll soothe your skin like crazy it'll soothe your legs it'll soothe your arms it'll soothe down there everything like I, I rub it everywhere. I put it everywhere. Cause you gotta keep your skin gotta keep your skin moisturized if you want to be soft, if you don't want your skin cracking and things like that because it's sensitive. That's the important part. Your skin is very sensitive. And whatever you do, do not wax. Do not wax your hair. Especially in the beginning. You like a few years down the road you can do that if you like that type of pain but don't don't wax and if you've ever had a bandage from your arm and removed it then you know why because um, I've had time I've had a time where my skin comes right off with my bandage after I've had blood work done I remove my bandage and a layer of skin will come right off with it so like a trick with your bandages if you still have to use those is to rub soap, massage soap all up in there, all over the bandage and get it like nice and moist with the soap, not just plain water, but you have to use soap or some type of oil. Um, the doctors sometimes they have uh, adhesive removers, but they don't always give them to you. They only give them, give it to me like once. And you rub that in there, just like some dish detergent will do, or just take the bar of soap and just rub it in, like take the bar and rub it all around, and then it'll like slide right off. And it won't leave like the it won't leave the glue on your arm either so you can do that and it'll be it'll be less painful so let's see oh skin care as far as lymphedema okay a lot of people are gonna have lymphedema and a lot of people are gonna have to have radiation we let's talk about the radiation part first I had radiation on my chest and it was a lot of radi radiation it was every day for six weeks my skin melted off my skin it just totally disintegrated so um, what the doctor did they give you little bottles of Eucerin cream use the cream make sure you use the cream on those spots rub it in you know use everywhere that you have radiation rub it in don't be afraid to ask your doctor for some more it's expensive when you get it from the store and you have to use a lot of it and they'll give you like a handful of the little sample bottles they keep them in there for patients so ask them for that like I actually I still have a dark mark on my back from where I couldn't couldn't reach it and the radiation I had radiation on the back side too so there's a dark mark and it's kind of sensitive to where I could not um, reach that area but my chest and my side and all that stuff looks a lot better since I was able to use that. Now, 
um, have lymphedema in my arm. I'm supposed to be wearing my sleeve right now, but I'm not. It's right here. I just took it off. I mean, because I got in the shower, so I took it off. But it's right here. I'm going to put it on a little bit. I'm not doing anything, so I figured I can, like, let my arm breathe. Now, as far as lymphedema, the doctor will tell you to get some eucerin cream for your lymphedema, too, for your arm. So, because if you don't take care of the swelling and you don't take care of the skin in the swelling area, it can crack and infection can set in and you don't want that. You can get infection a, a number of ways with lymphedema, but you don't want to get it because you're not taking care of your skin. So, I did not even use the use money cream for my lymphatic arm. What I actually used was vitamin E oil and the aloe vera gel. And I also used coconut oil. Coconut oil is about $8 a jar. You get a jar. You get a nice jar, you know. And you get that from the grocery store because it's a food. And it's, it's edible. You can cook with it and everything. But I keep it upstairs in my cabinet. And I have my $2 bottle of vitamin E oil. And I have my aloe vera gel. I take the aloe vera gel and the vitamin E oil, or I take the aloe vera gel and the coconut oil and rub it, and rub it in my skin. I actually use that all over my whole body. I rub that in my skin. My skin is so soft, you wouldn't, you wouldn't even believe it. Like I go to the doctors, and they touch my arm, and they can't believe how soft it is, because apparently a lot of people who have like edema, their skin is really tough. The skin gets tough because of um, the swelling, I guess. But I was really overcautious about it. I didn't want to get any infections or anything else like that. So I'd always keep it extremely moisturized. So that's what you should do. You can use the eucerin if you want to. It'll probably be quick. You just squirt it, you know, and keep going. But I'm not doing, I've never done that. I've always used the um, aloe vera gel mixed with the oil and rub it in there and you know get it I mean I mean it is very soft um, a lot of my doctors they'll just be rubbing my arm just just be rubbing on me it's kind of weird but you know I guess I, I guess I, I understand I don't know but they'll just be oh you have the softest skin I've ever seen in my whole life it feels so good what are you doing you know and so you know I thought I'd share that with you guys but Really, don't expect miracles when it comes to your hair. I know some people, they get all the hair back and it's just curly and wavy and beautiful and luscious. But that did not happen for me. My hair grew back. It's soft. It's extremely thin. It, don't, it doesn't take me long to comb it and stuff now. Not like before. And I never complained about having to comb it before because I just love how thick it was. And it's extremely thin on my head and it's thick everywhere else. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's really, I don't think I left anything, y'all. I think that's all I have to say about that. If you have any questions or any suggestions or anything like that, um, feel free to comment or inbox or whatever you want to do. Uh, as far as skincare in your face, don't use alcohol on your face all the time. It will dry your skin out. Uh, do not exfoliate after you finish your chemo for a very long time, for a few years. Don't do exfoliants. I didn't even have any acne or anything after chemo. I figured it killed everything. It killed bad and good and everything in between. So I had no acne after I finished chemo. That was like the only good thing about it. <laughs> So my skin was like really smooth. Don't use, don't use your old makeup after chemo. I was told to get rid of everything. I didn't really have anything anyways because I just used lip gloss and eyeliner, which is what I have on now. But there were, there was a group called Ladies in Pink, I think it was, and they gave me a whole makeup kit, new brushes and new eyeliner and. Um, chapstick and lip gloss and lipstick and 
concealer and all kinds of stuff that I didn't know what to do with because I never used it in my life. But they also gave me a class on how to use it. I used it all once and I thought I looked like a plastic doll baby so I didn't do that anymore. Uh, I do use cocoa powder on my face from time to time. I don't really use any um, foundation. I don't like liquid foundation. I do that. Um, that's it. That's it. So if you have any questions or if you think I left anything out and you want to comment and add to it, feel free in the comment box below. I don't mind anything to help out each other. Okay. Y'all just make sure you be aware, be safe, and live happy. Bye.